Welcome to all of you and greetings to all of you folks. I want to first of all start out by saying thank you so very much for all your care, your concern. Uh, so much appreciated. Uh, I know that I sound a little bit short-winded. That's normal. It happens to me every now and then, and when it does, I really don't pay any attention to it. I just keep right on going. What it is, I don't know. I've never seen a doctor for it. I'm guessing it's some sort of a reoccurring asthma. And again, I don't think that's a medical term. That's just something that I came up with, and I've learned to live with it. So uh, it doesn't stop me. It doesn't slow me down. I don't have a temperature. I don't have a fever. I'm absolutely fine. It's just I find my self somewhat short-winded and so again thank you so very much for your concern uh, all of you folks but don't give it a second thought okay uh, as a matter of fact I'm not totally over it yet but you'll see I'm probably a little bit better than than uh, on Sunday all right uh, I'm gonna shotgun I'm gonna give you quite a bit of news uh, in different parts of what's happening and then uh, hopefully towards the end of the video I'll kind of wrap it up uh, let me start out by saying that um, I'm, I'm very happy to hear that over probably 95% of you, actually probably even more than that, in the last video caught on that the title underneath the video was really rhetorical. It was not expected to be answered because I answered it in the video. And of course, yes, we can know. Uh, if that sounds like a little bit, maybe I'm backing up on myself here, I'm not at all. Go back about two weeks ago and look in my videos and you'll see where I made a video on yes we can know so all as I did was I built on the idea that uh, many people were thinking it might be taking too long no not really the answer was then to my last video is that we couldn't have no one <laughs> because we had to have stuff unfold uh, more prophecies had to come up in light and then we were able to say okay now I can understand why we didn't get it all right that's enough on the video <clears throat> okay so one of the things that, uh, that are in the news is this peace treaty, this ceasefire, these talks between Hamas uh, going on and Israel is to stop Israel uh, from uh, warring any further, completely stop, completely empty out of Gaza, completely, and then line up to give away thousands and thousands of terrorist prisoners within the Israel jails, and then... Uh, Hamas will, in segments, give up the hostages and a period of anywhere from, they've talked, 45 days to 190 days and uh, even further than that, that they want to spread it out. But Israel may not come back into to, uh, Gaza ever again. Well, of course, that's naturally a dead stop right there for Netanyahu and the coalition there within Israel. It's not going to happen. Uh, so that brought everything to an end. Some of the most important parts to gather out of this is, is that how much effort is the United States making to be able to make some sort of a deal uh, along with the Arab nations to present to Israel not only for the treaty but to talk about the end of the war as they can see it's happening. Let's talk about the end of the war for a minute. It is more than obvious the victory right now lies within Israel's hands. And uh, Netanyahu's made that very obvious, that they're very close to ending uh, the Hamas resistance and then eventually to demilitarize. And that means all of Hamas's warring factions are gone out of Gaza. So back around to what America uh, Anthony Blinken, Secretary of State, uh, has gone around to the different Arab nations and saying, hey, look, if we work together, we'll coerce Israel, we'll push Israel into some sort of a ceasefire. That ceasefire will be long enough to where Israel can't start the war again, and then we're going to start establishing today, and this is Blinken, American, this is uh, Saudi Arabia, this is um, uh, Qatar, this is Egypt, uh, it goes on and on. Many nations are saying what we're going to do is we're going to pressure Israel into, at the end of the war, a two-state solution. <laughs> we have an answer for that. That's coming up towards the end. And I'll explain that to you. And um, so what this really means is, is that the, the union of all these countries are coming together and they're saying to Israel, what you need to do is you need to find a way to simulate yourself with a Palestinian state. 
And Israel's saying it's the other way around. You need to find a way for the Palestinians to simulate and get along with and be in the ways of Israel. So you can see where the difference is there. It's almost like day and night, black and white. It's Israel is attempting to be divided is the point here. Let's go back into some of the other videos um, that I have made. And we had talked about Israel and end times. Now, this is important where I talked to you about in the beginning of the video. I said, hey, folks, remember, you're that small percentage of people that understand scripture. They don't. Uh, news media outlets, everyone that's uh, Anthony Blinken, uh, you know, Netanyahu, all those, they don't have an idea of what scripture says. Okay, so uh, what I want to do is I want to go back over some of the scripture if I can with you folks. And um, I want you to know that here I was talking about before. Let me bring it up to you here right now. Here it is. <clears throat> it says, uh, Israel, the hand of the Lord is upon me. And I want you to notice uh, Ezekiel 37, 16, and we talked about the sticks. I'm not going to go into great detail here. The sticks were the names written of ten tribes and two tribes. And those two sticks come together. That's important to understand. Okay, folks, if you go back again into history, you'll understand that when David was king over uh, uh, Israel, uh, eventually Israel became divided. There was a north and a south, and it was of ten tribes on the southern side and the two tribes on the northern side. And I might have that backwards, but I think that's right. So Israel, it was an internal fight, and that's part of what Scripture is talking about. And you're going to see here uh, in Zechariah 12, that is also what's talking about, because what it did is it brought together again, um, if we can go down here just a little bit, back to uh, here, let's see, 22, and I will make them one nation in the land upon the mountains of Israel, and one king shall be king to them all, and they shall no more uh, two nations, neither shall they be divided into two kingdoms. So the Palestinian war right here, folks, is, it's, this is an absolute no-no according to Ezekiel 37, 22. So we got a grasp on that. Okay, remember the two-state solution. You know, that's not going to happen. But neither shall they be divided into two kingdoms. What's that talking about? Go back up here again. Okay. Uh, Moreover, thou son of man shall take the one stick and write upon it Judah. Okay, and for the children of Israel and his uh, companions, then take another stick and write upon it for Joseph, and a stick of Ephraim, right here, for all the house of Israel, his companions. Well, what he's saying there is it's a mix-up. That was an internal thing within Israel that's going to be repaired. All right, let's get on with some more scripture. I did say I was going to shotgun, folks. Hang in there with me. Um, Here's something that, again, from another video that I want you folks to allow me, if you would, just to quickly go over it, because this is important. And that is Isaiah 66. We talked about that the is nation of Israel being brought back together in its land and made a nation again in one day. And so before, they, before she travailed, she brought forth. Before her pain came, she was delivered. Okay, I want you to understand something here now. Okay, it says, before she travailed. No, she's travailing right now. Before, I'm sorry, she brought forth before her pain came. Her pain is there today. So this has all happened right now that he's speaking about. Before uh, she was delivered a man-child, Israel then had given to her their Messiah. Messiah crucified, resurrected, and went up into heaven. So let's go into right here. And I want you to go back into, again, scriptures we've talked about, folks. I'm only shotgunning here, but I'm bringing it all together for you, hopefully. And here it is. Right here, I want you to go down to 5. This is Revelation 12, 5. Uh, and she brought forth a man-child. Did, did you, 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 hopefully you just caught on to that. Let me slide this one side right here. Delivered a man-child. This is right here, Isaiah 66, 7. All right, let's go on down here. Who had heard of such a thing or seen such a thing? Uh, shall the earth be made to bring forth in one day? It's Israel being brought forth again in one day. Or shall a nation be born at once? For as soon as Zion travailed, she brought forth her children. Okay, so let's go back here now to 5. 
right here. Let's read this from the beginning again, all the way to the end. And she brought forth a man-child who was to rule all nations with the rod of iron. This goes back now talking about Isaiah, 60, or Isaiah speaking in Isaiah 66. And then it says, and remember what this is all about. Okay, come back up to Revelation 12, the great wonder right here. She being with child, uh, cried, travailing in birth to be delivered. Now they just took us to today's times. Okay, let's go back down to five again. Okay, so to uh, brought forth a man child who was to rule all the nations with the rod of iron. And then right here, it starts, and her child was caught up. That word is, the two words are actually transposed and understood to have meant harpazo. They are caught up, harpazoed, unto God and to his throne. Her child, man child, and her child. Back here again. Man child and her children. So you can see this was even foretold back with Isaiah 66 when he spoke of to uh, of Israel and the conditions that they would be in. Let's just finish with the uh, because this is again going back over Scripture. No, we can know. <laughs> it's been taken a while because of the fact that so much Scripture we did not get understood. But I'm I'm trying to bring that around to you again. My little shotgun my <laughs> shotgun video here. Uh, I prophesied and commanded me Ezekiel. And the breath came into them. Now this is talking about all the dry bones. They lived and they stood up upon their feet and what? An exceedingly great army. It's so important to understand that. That he is here in Ezekiel 37 talking about this mighty army that's coming up. What's Israel doing today with their mighty army? <laughs> is this not falling into place? Okay, so what we did is we talked about the sticks. We talked about, uh, yeah, the sticks right here. Um, not going to be divided any longer into two kingdoms, but uh, they shall be no more two nations. They're not going to be a Palestinian state. So there's the division between the two right there. Uh, Revelation 12, we went over that and explained that to you where that was. Let me, um, let me carry on here a little bit further. Let's see, I've got it right here. I need a bigger table here, folks. Um, give me one second, let me find that. Now let's go ahead and let's bounce into another part of scripture here that's going to lead us to understand further what is really happening. Okay, so we're going to go right into, I made a little goof there if you see a bump in the video. Here it is, we're going to get into Zechariah 12, the burden of the Lord. Behold, I will make Jerusalem a cup of trembling unto um, all the people round about when they shall, they shall be in siege both against Judah and against Jerusalem. Here's your two stick reference again, right here. Okay, hold on one second. We're not done here to be able to explain a little bit more of what Zechariah is talking about. I'm going to take you right into Psalms 83. As Asaph, the prophet, gets specific here. I should make it very clear that this prophecy has not been fulfilled. For lone thine enemies, uh, keep not silent, God. For lone, for lo, uh, thine enemies make a tumult that they have hated. He have lifted up their head. <laughs> Folks, this is jumping off of the paper into today's news. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people, consulted against, and here it is, the hidden ones. This is a time frame of today, speaking of a specific time. There are other places in scripture that, yes, you can say those are the hidden ones, but this is pertinent to a specific time within scripture that we can call and as we're aligning it and I'm hopefully doing that for you today the hidden ones the hostages for they have said to let to um for they have said come and let us cut them off from being a nation that the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance that's exactly what's happening today for they have consulted together under one consent and they are confederate against thee, as I have spoke about what it is that the Biden administration and the nations are coming up against Israel to do what? To worry about the time of the end of the war. Why? Because the end of the war is a lot more near than they thought. Now let's keep on this line of train of thought here. Okay, a two-state, 
we saw in Ezekiel 37, 22, no more division. So you see, the plan is, by Hamas, is to somehow get a truce so they can reorganize because they realize they're losing in the Gaza Strip. Tremendously. And one of the main purposes, reasons, the energy behind the military, Israel's military right now, is to focus in on those that have been taken from them, that, are, that have been stolen. They've been taken from Israel and they're hostages in this area called Gaza Strip. And everyone that we're speaking of other than Israel doesn't want Israel to have that Gaza Strip. Again, they're saying to everyone in Israel that what you must do is you must file along with rank and file of all the other countries if you think you want to get along with us in the future. What they're saying is, is what you must do is you must consider and work into this whole program a two-state solution. Again, as I've showed you, that's not going to happen, Ezekiel 37:22, Not going to take place. All right, I want to keep on going here because there's more in here. <clears throat> Give me one second. I'm learning how to use this pause button. I had to go back to my little notes to get myself all lined up. What the point was, or another one of the points, is the day after the war. It is obvious as of in the news, and I'm bringing that to you for the last several days, that Israel's military is succeeding much faster than they ever thought they would be, and they feel that they're very close again to figuring out what they're going to do with this last part of the Gaza Strip where they know the head leader of Hamas, Senwar, is. They believe he is in this cornered little area which they believe there are the hostages. I found it really interesting the other day, folks. <clears throat> Yesterday it was, is that Israel was so confident that they had taken control of the southern part of Gaza Strip that they were taking and bringing in, leading in, different correspondence from different major news outlets. If the war was going on really heavy, that would be a very liable thing to do for Israel. But they decided that it was safe enough in the southern part of Gaza. Uh, they call it Khan Yunus, Khan Yunus area. And as these, these um, uh, correspondents, news correspondents are walking around, the soldiers are basically just sitting back and taking it easy. I found that so interesting. They're just kind of looking around. That area has been secured. I find that so interest, so interesting. Now, here's the thing. It's not over with in all of Gaza because there's still these little pockets of resistance that flare up. So Israel is more than capable now of once they do, of getting to wherever it is that can be up in northern Gaza, can be in middle of Gaza, and they can quickly take care of it. And all it is is just eliminating, basically sweeping up the last few of the Hamas terrorists that decide to all of a sudden spring into action in other parts of the Gaza Strip. And Israel's more than able to do that. Uh, just a quick note, Hezbollah up north. Uh, that is, by the way, I'm going to say this, and, and, and let me put this into the right, again, I'm shotgunning here. Folks, let me put this into the right perspective. <clears throat> Hezbollah has not fired any of its main um, artillery that it has. It, they're very, um, let's see, what am I trying to say here? They really could be a lot more powerful against Israel than what they are right now. But we understand that Iran controls Hezbollah. This is a northern Israel. Uh, this is up there, you know, uh, in Lebanon, Hezbollah. But if there should ever come a time that Iran says release those missiles, this is another card in the deck. I, w I want you to just think about this for a minute. If Iran feels like for some particular reason it might be losing, and it's going to lose, would it play its last card of a military force that is not in Iran? <laughs> Iran doesn't want to have to go to war. It wants to preserve its land. It, it wants to use its proxies. Okay, West Bank is basically not anywhere as powerful as it used to be. Uh, I, I believe you could say that's pretty much under control by Israel, uh, the West Bank. Gaza is becoming under control. As the Atollah in Iran realizes this, could he say, 
okay, Hezbollah, go with this supposed massive missile um, batteries that they have. They said over 100,000 of them. And they're all pointed at Israel, and they're much stronger than the ones that they've been using. So that's another card that could be thrown in. And the reason I say that is, is because of some scripture that I read that makes sense to me. I'll find it. It only takes a second. It's right here. I say that a lot, don't I? Okay, um, here it is right here. I'm, I'm going to go into Zechariah now again. You know, So you understand that all of this makes sense. The more you read this, the more you go over the scripture, the more it will begin to make sense. Okay, here it is right here. Iran's last card it can play, Hezbollah, get lit, go for it. Everything that you've got, go up against Israel. Okay, now no, watch right here. This is uh, Zechariah 12 again, the burden of the word of the Lord for Israel. This we are speaking about at this end time. Right here in Jerusalem will become a cup of trembling to all. Remember Psalm 83. Okay, they're all coming against it. Unto all the people around, again, here we go, around, Psalm 83, when they shall be in siege both against Judah and against Jerusalem, the sticks bringing them back together again, and in that day, as we understand a specific day, will I make Jerusalem a burdensome stone for all the people. What would you say is happening today? Could you call, in any time other in history, could you see, and remember what Zachariah is talking about is today. Uh, all the that burden themselves with it, uh, again, all the nations trying to coerce Israel into a two-state solution, which Ezekiel pointed out that that's not going to happen. And they shall be, and here it comes, the, that those, then all that burden themselves with it shall be cut into pieces Though all the people of the earth be gathered against, against it, which is today more than ever before. Uh, there is a separation of the church here, which that's another, another study. Well, I'm not going to get into that right now. Um, in that day, says the Lord, and here it comes. So Hezbollah says, we just got orders from Iran. Let's launch our major massive missile uh, cache that we have against Israel. Let's go for it. In that day, says the Lord, I will smite every horse with its astonishment. And again, the terminology horse is going to have to mean pretty much any type of armament that's used that's military. So uh, tanks, helicopters, jets, um, you know, land-to-land -land missiles, air-to-land missiles. Okay, so the horse with astonishment. It's amazing because this all of a sudden, uh, other parts of Scripture fall into place. Where Asaph says, God, do unto them as you did in Sesra. And then he says, uh, this big hearth of fire that's going to consume. And his rider with madness, you know, horse astonishment, and his rider with madness, all those that are in control. And I will open mine eyes upon the house of Judah, here it comes again, and will smite every horse of the people with blindness. So something's going to happen to where when God steps in, this is going to be a combination accumulation that's going to happen all at once and again and it says repeatedly in that day that we're speaking of, of when it happens now let's see i'm going to come down here to the bottom let's see if this makes my point or not in that day i will make the governors of judah like the hearth of fire amongst the wood and like a torch of fire in the sheaf and they shall devour all the people around about it on the right hand and on the left hand and jerusalem shall be you think when I type this up, I might have had that actually um, on the same page, wouldn't you? Uh, inhabited again in her own place, even in Jerusalem, bringing whatever it is that God's going to do to an end. So now the only part that we haven't talked about yet is what's going to bring all of this all about. <laughs> Folks, if you're still hanging in there with me, you're just doing a wonderful job. Um, we're going to talk about all of those Israeli people that have been evacuated from their homes, that have bordered up against um, Israel, oh, I'm sorry, against Gaza and uh, Strip and the northern part, which is Lebanon. Now, over 100,000 is what I'm told. Sometimes I read 120, sometimes 80,000. So I'm going to just say 100,000 
evacuees from their home. And that's a big cry today in Israel. When are you going to make it safe for us to go back into our homes again? And, and Netanyahu and its, its coalition, this is a big problem. He can't even practically go out into the streets where he's not consumed by hundreds telling him, when are we going to get to get back into our houses again? When are you going to make it safe for us? We want to have our peace back again. When is that going to be? And <laughs> that's interesting, isn't it? You know where I'm going, don't you? Uh, let's see, I can find that, I think, without having to stop anything here. And I still have the main part of what I want to explain to you coming. So let me find it here. I'm going to use the magic little button here again. So are we having fun yet? <laughs> okay, let's get back to it. All right, here we go. Right here, 1 Thessalonians 5. This just wraps it up, folks. I mean, come on, this, seriously. But of the time, times and of the seasons, brethren, you have no need that I write unto you. <laughs> really? All right. For you yourselves know perfectly that the day, <laughs> spoken about again and again in that day, the Lord so cometh as a, not as a, uh, as the thief, rather, as a not as the, uh, as a thief in the night. Okay, so now what we're going to do is, for when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction come upon them. Folks, understand, I've shotgunned, but I'm bringing this all around. And hopefully, especially if you're still hanging in there, this is going to start just falling right into place. When they say peace and safety upon them as travail upon a woman with a child, still with the child, and they shall not escape, but then the child is delivered. That's for our understanding here. But ye brethren are not of darkness. That means, let's do, let's do this real slowly here. But ye brethren are not in darkness, that the day should overtake you as a thief. When I first started this video, <clears throat> I said that <clears throat> one of the things that I wanted you to understand was, was that there is coming a time when God is going to step in and those that are of light is that small percentage. That's you. Because you're searching and you're, you're wanting to know about scriptures and you're wanting to know about end times. So if you really now are able to play this through, why it is that Paul in Thessalonians speaks of this specifically of those that are in the light. Very small, few select that are in the light right now that are understanding where we are today. When you listen to all the news that's out there, you'll catch on. They can't understand any of this what you do. When Israel appears to be winning the war. I'm, I'm going to stop here and not in conceit, and I don't mean it that way. But I have spoke this over and over again with all of you, and so many of you agreed with me, and that's the important part that you agreed with me. Now, if two more witnesses come together in the name of our Heavenly Father, we'll have understanding given to us. And that is, is that in a specific time, those that are in the light... Okay, let's go on. And, and I, I have said in other videos, folks, too, that, uh, that you would be able to understand this. Let, let me just continue here. But you're not in darkness, uh, darkness, that that day should overtake you. It's not going to happen to you. Now back up one more again. For when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction come upon them. As travail upon a woman with a child, she still has a child as that and will come upon them. All right, back again to what we were saying. Yes, we do know when it can happen. And we do understand. And we understand about all those that were evacuated from their home. And this is a burdensome to Israel and its communities. They want to be in their land safe and be at peace. Even though they don't understand Scripture, little do they know they are playing Scripture out. It's, it, if this is not coming right off the page to you now, 
it really should be. All right, so let's wrap this up. Israel is at a position to where it appears that it's going to win. The hostage situation, how that's going to unfold, I can't tell. But at a given moment, someplace, how this is unfolding, Israel, even with Hezbollah doing what they're doing, is going to feel that it can say to its people, you will be having a safe neighborhood again, and you'll be able to live in peace. Now, understand the way Paul worded it. He said, when they are saying that, as this war winds down, are they not beginning to talk about Israeli refugees moving back into their homes again and feeling safe and at peace? Not having security, feeling safe. So in other words, security brings about the safety. But it says, when Paul says, when they say that, not when they have it, where is Israel today? They're looking at they're going to be winning this war. The people are getting excited about moving back into their homes again. Hezbollah hasn't done anything. There's the loose card, remember? It's just doing enough just to irritate Israel. Israel's got it under control. Um, Israel's even planning on possibly an incursion up and in there. So I'm going to give you my last little notes here. I'm just going to speak. I'm not going to give them to you. The day after was the big concern. This is what's bothering America, the UN, the UK. This is what's bothering uh, Egypt, uh, uh, you know, the eastern part. This is bothering everybody right now that this whole thing is going to come to an end. And Israel, what they're saying, you must simulate into a Palestinian understanding, a two-state solution. You must give them what they want that they won't war upon you anymore. We all know that's impossible. Uh, knowing the nature of, of the Palestinian warring factions, we know that's impossible. When they really should be saying, and what Israel's trying to get across is, is no, you Palestinians need to simulate on into our way. We're the peaceful ones, you're not. So this great problem that Israel needs to, this burden, this cup of trembling that's happening within Israel, Israel right now, comes down to this point that only you can understand the very few that are in the light. And that is, is God's plan. God's plan is a one-state solution. This is what it's coming down to. Is it going to be a two-state solution? Is it going to be a one-state solution? Is God going to win? Or is the enemies of God going to win against all odds of Israel being able to succeed enough to be able to further God's plan, which we understand what it is. Remove the church is what God's plan is. The sudden destruction Paul speaks of comes upon Israel. The surrounding enemies of Israel are eliminated. There's God's one state plan. You have a somebody that shows up with great authority and power given to him by Satan. You see all the scriptures falling into place, isn't it? This great authority and power, he goes into a specific place and tells over 100 and, well, 193 nations within the UN that I have the strength, I have the authority, I have the power. That Israel gets seven years worth of doing whatever it wants to do. There's your tribulation start. Do we need to go back into that scripture again? Maybe we can do that on Sunday. Let me know if you want me to. A covenant is confirmed, Daniel 9.27. Then Israel has already had a war won for them. They can build their temple as per specifications of Scripture and begin sacrificing. 
And that is God's plan unfold just prior to that happening. <clears throat> Excuse me. Prior to that happening, Israel's enemies must be removed and this whole surrounding enemy problem of this burdensome against Israel as Israel becomes center of attention or the cup of trembling that God has pointed out through Scripture, which hopefully I have given you enough for you not to take my word for it, but my explanation with the Scriptures I've given you for you to determine. We're going to pick this back up again on Sunday and go from there. But this was a lot. I know it's a long video. Folks, we're at a closing time within our Heavenly Father's will that is going to be done on this earth as he so clearly put it and Paul made it so perfectly understood that we would know when the time came. First Thessalonians 5 1. 5 3 he said that when they say peace and safety there's your people moving in and I've said that in past videos over two months ago I said that's what we're looking for because that's the peace and safety that Paul was talking about when they feel they can move back into their homes again that they will be safe and finally at peace, then the sudden destruction. So it's something that has to happen before, not after this um, action of God is so told in uh, Psalms 83 by Asaph. That sudden destruction, as Paul talks about in 1 Thessalonians 5.3. So back to my last video. Why is it taking so long? I'm so happy to hear so many of you caught on, and there's only a few of you thought it was necessary to answer it when I answered it in the video and that is is that we had not been able to see all of this until it unfolds before our very eyes and that is today's videos right before your very eyes all of this is unfolding all right folks until next Sunday I hope this was helpful to you I know that was a lot I know it's a long video if you made it here all the way to the end let me say in Jesus name Father, Son, a special blessing to you. For you've made it this far, you must have had a lot of interest. And I'm hoping this is helpful. Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, I pray for that blessing to all. Amen. Okay, last statement, and that is, you don't ever take my word for it. You take it to Scripture and read and have the Holy Spirit that's been given you teach and guide you. Till Sunday. Okay, thank you.